Alright guys, so I'm going to show you how to hook up your mining system to an automatic processing system. So what I have back here is a chest hooked up to a quarry and when I turn the quarry on the idea is it's going to wirelessly teleport thanks to my chest. My chest is going to send them through these macerators, through these furnaces, and then ultimately into these barrels in this kind of leftover storage chest. And we're going to do all of this using red power. So over here we have our red power solar arrays, our red power battery box, and we'll just quick go over how to make those. Also we'll delete some of these stuff. So battery box. And with not enough items you can just search what you want, hit the R button while hovering over to see what the recipe is, or hit the U button to see what recipes it's used in. So battery box is just BT batteries, nickelite copper tin, blue alloy, ingot made from silver, nickelite, and pretty straightforward, solar panel, the blue electric solar panel, not the uh, you know, industrial craft solar panel. So there's blue doped wafers. You make doped wafers by fusing these sand and coal in an alloy furnace. It works just like a regular furnace, so alloy bricks. Where was I? So the blue doped wafer. You make the silicon boule, you fuse the boule with the handsaw, or I guess you chop it with the handsaw, you make the wafer. And then you can mix the wafer with either nickelite or redstone to make blue or red doped wafers. So you need some blue doped wafers for these, red doped wafers to make the machines we're going to use. So the first machine we're going to use, and well, these are industrial craft machines, I guess I'm kind of assuming you know how to use industrial craft when I make this mod. It is in my opinion, the core mod of industry of Tekkit. Not sure what's going on with my lighting here. So these are on, they're powered, they're running. They're getting their power from this MFE and their cables are hidden underground. So our first uh, tool we're going to use machine is called the filter. And this is a very basic red power machine. Uh, it's got a red dope wafer in it like we just talked about. So you make it and you're going to need a whole bunch of these. I'm overly fond of these. I could probably replace them with retrievers even. Or with a couple retrievers. So we're going to put it down here. This kind of crossy end is the input. This little narrow end is the output. I don't know why, but this world lags. And it's probably because this is my experiment world, so I have a ton of stuff here. Uh, that is not the right device. I want pneumatic tube. So. These are pneumatic tubes, which are vastly superior to the buildcraft tubes, in my opinion. And we're going to hook it up to a sorter. And a sorter does require blue electric power. The filter runs solely on um, red power, so you send a red power current into it and it does something. Such is not the case with the sorter. So now we're going to go over this way, bam, 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 bam. I am warning you ahead of time, unfortunately I have a mouse bug where every now and then my key will get stuck down and it gets worse when I lag. So now we're going to hook up all of our machines in this nice lovely fashion. Bam, bam, bam. We're going to put these here. Actually, these are going to be made out of restriction tube. I don't 
know what's going on right now. Anyways, so like that. We need a feedback loop here. And voila. So the principle here is oops, this one. Is this machine's gonna pull things out of this chest one stack at a time? It's gonna send them over to the sorter, and the sorter's gonna analyze it and say, we'll go to this one, this one, this one, or straight to this next chest. And right now my quarry is set up in the nether. So we're gonna pretend we're using only nether ingredients. So I'm gonna assign nether ores I care about positions to go to, and I'm gonna give them red, green, and blue, so we need paint brushes. I need the green paint brush, the red paint brush, and the blue paint brush. And the white paint brush. So I'm just going to color these red, blue, green, and white. And now I go over to my sorter, which has power because it's hooked up to power. And I'm going to change it to default mode. So anything that passes through here that I don't have a rule for will go to white. And I'm going to right click, right click a whole bunch, right click a whole bunch more, red, green, blue. And red, blue, green. I'm going to change these so that they reflect what I'm looking at from this angle. And what I want to put in here are these nether ores I have with me. These are all the nether ores that I care about that you can macerate. So we're going to go with iron into red, copper into green, tin into blue. These are the three most common ores, and I would recommend putting them in different positions. Next we're going to do redstone, nicolite, and lapis lazuli. Each of these macerates into 16. You don't want them in the same one, or you could overload the system. And then the rest of them don't really matter so much. Yeah, that seems good. So, that's this first leg of the system. And what this does is it sends it out this way, up to here. This is a restriction tube. And so what happens is, let's say I send something into here, and it goes all the way down here, and it goes into red. But for whatever reason, this macerator is full. And that's very unlikely to happen, but for the sake of argument, we'll say it happens. Instead of going into red macerator and getting really confused, it goes in, comes back out, goes all the way back, back here, and back into the chest, where it gets filtered again and tries when there's more space. So that works out well. And now we put filters down here. And this is where I've been debating adding a retriever at the end instead of these filters. But what you do is you set these filters to white and by automatic default they will send all of the items they pull out to white. And here's a fun fact about industrial craft. Ingredients go in the top, things come out the right. It's just the way it works. Um, if you put things in the bottom they end up this slot. If you put them in the left side I think they'll end up in this slot, but I'm not positive about that. So that's the first leg of our journey, and that's actually the whole premise of this. So now we just do it again. So we put this down. I know I can use wrenches to rotate these, but this is actually just faster. So bam. It needs power. Now it's got power, and bam, bam, uh, how do I want to do this? So I'm just going to make the return loop now.
we go. So just in case things go wrong, and then we send it forward. Yep. Come back. Oh, I'm having some weirdness now. Anyways. So we attach these, we break these, extra nubs off. And... I guess we have to change where this chest is. We attach our extras, extra filters, one, two, one, two, one, two. Then we add our tubes here. Tubey tube, tubey tube. Then we call it. So. I don't really care what colors, which right now, but we'll just stay consistent. Here's a fun fact. I keep putting two spaces between things because I'm lazy, but you can just as easily put a uh, cover between two pneumatic tubes. So let's get a cover out here. Just one cover. So if I have two tubes next to each other and I don't want them to touch, I can just put a cover there. Bam! And that's it. The cover you make by just chopping a block in half with a handsaw until you have eight. So that's the end of that part of the system. We put on our last filter here. This filter doesn't need a default color. I forgot to put the default color on the other one, so I'll have to go back for that. And I'll do that now because I don't want to forget. Bam, 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 bam. And... Just ignore that. I was proving a point earlier. <laughs> and this is why creative mode is dumb. And there we go. So now goes through the system, goes into there comes out over here, and then the magic thing about these barrels, and I really like this, is once a barrel's full, it'll just send something on to the next one. So this fills up with netherrack, anything else comes along, it moves on to the next hole. And then you, I add this proxy chest at the end just in case for some reason all the barrels get full. Uh, these are extra dimensional barrels, so they can hold like a thousand stacks. So if these get full, you have other problems to worry about. And I'm going to go turn on the quarry in the nether, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so the quarry is pretty much ready to go. There's just one last thing to add, which is this timer. So this timer is going to be responsible for running our system. And we're going to run our system at 0.4, because that's slightly faster than the amount of power than the speed necessary to um, keep the macerators empty. So we're going to hook up these guys. We're going to be careful to avoid routing the uh, power from levers into the system because we don't want constant redstone. The system is absolutely dependent on 
this intermittent burst. So now the system's ready. I'm going to go make sure the quarry is working, and then we'll see this in action. Okay, so the key is to make sure that this is set to receive and to be on the right frequency. So now, as you can see, we've got ore coming in. It's getting pumped out, it's getting processed, and it's coming through the system. And I forgot something. So, this needs colors. Alright, there we go, that was close. Also make sure all these have white marked on them, or you will have some weird backlogging. Also make sure these are all colored correctly. And there we go. So, this is the system. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll show you what happens when you overload it. So, let's go with nether copper ore. So, copper goes to green. So, if I fill this with green, fill this with this. Sometimes you'll have to move things to this first spot too, if you really want them to go through. Because it just takes a system while. So, this is our stack of copper. Incoming, incoming, incoming. It hits it. It fills it. The rest of it goes. Comes back. And... Goes through the restricted tube and back to where it started. And the reason we have two of these is because if you only put one restriction tube here, what'll happen is it will go, it'll hit here, it'll say, well, this filter is closer than that, and it'll go into there. So we put two restriction tubes there to prevent that from happening. And that's it. Now we're going to get a whole bunch of copper, and it's all going to go into this chest, or barrel. And that's the system, pretty straightforward. If you want to, you can improve it. You can add retrievers and just get rid of this completely. Just shove a retriever down here and put these on a separate track from the main processing line. Uh, it's a little easier in terms of the number of machines you need and perhaps setting it up. And definitely space. It's more space efficient, but it's less easy because you do need to wire more blue electric power to it. But you don't need a lot of blue electric power to do things. So, this is my automatic ore processor. Um, you can compact it a lot more. This is the expanded version, so you can see what you're doing. But I've managed to squeeze this three machine setup into, I think, a 7x7 seven seven space. So, you can get it really tight. And then you get things into the system by just introducing them to the chests or directly into the macerators. The nice thing about this setup is you can put whatever you want into the macerator and it'll get sucked out. It doesn't have to go through the color coding first. And that's it. So enjoy. Good luck. This greatly simplifies mining as now you just have to periodically, when you notice ore is not going through your system, find your quarry, move it, and continue doing whatever you were doing before. And you can hook multiple quarries up to this. So, as you can see, the system really is building up a lot of struggling to get through this first chunk there. And you can speed it up, but it only does so much. And actually, if you look, that's confused it, so maybe that's not a good idea. And if this is happening, you can just force it to do your bidding. And what will happen is eventually, if you're lucky, your quarry will hit a gap, and there will be a brief like 
one or two second respite, and during that I can get the rest of them. So don't worry too much about this overloading. Again, this safety loop is here to prevent it from overloading. And even heaven forbid your diamond chest fills up, it can get a lot of stuff in circulation before it becomes a problem. So, very powerful, very useful, very easy to set up, and very impressive. It's also kind of mesmerizing to watch. So, I'm going to stop rambling. Now we're done.